So next I want to just talk a little bit about some different ways to bring these women or other women from the Women of Valor exhibit or really any anyone who you would classify as a Jewish role model or hero. Um, you know, there are lots of examples of these people, both contemporary examples, historical examples, and, and biblical examples. And I find that um, the more we as Jewish educators can make connections between those different periods in our history and say, you know, here's an example of a biblical woman and she shares some values with this contemporary person. And do we know anybody in our community who's like that? I think the more times we can sort of draw those parallels using values and, and personal qualities of people, the, the more relatable um, all of these different characters feel to our students. Um, uh, Sherry Rose asked a question about whether or not we have resources for elementary students and whether or not we're planning on developing more. So at this point in time, we don't have any resources that are specifically for elementary students, although many, many elementary educators um, find our materials easy to adapt for their classrooms. And I'm going to give a couple examples of that now. Um, I would also say that we have some new resources on our site um, that focus on using primary source documents and teaching more generally. Um, and there are a few different places to find that information. I'll highlight a few in a second, but um, the other, so the other place, I will point you to a few other places. So one is I realized we didn't show you the Ray Frank Go and Learn activity. So Again, here's the list of Go and Learn activities. It's under the education menu here. And the last one is on Ray Frank's Yom Kippur sermon. Um, and you'll notice that this is slightly different um, in that it has the three age appropriate lesson plans here for middle school and high school, family education and adults. And then there's also a lesson plan for adult women specifically, which is great um, for sisterhoods or Rosh Chodesh group. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that that's there. We also have this um, fantastic resource that um, I recently put together and I realized that there's not a link to it from the main menu on our site. So if you go to jwa.org slash teach slash working with primary sources, or if you do a search for working with primary sources on our site, it'll bring you to this page. Um, I will get the menu fixed. But um, in the meantime, you can get to it this way. And this page is a great place for those of you who feel like you want to adapt some of the material, or maybe we don't have lesson plans written about the material that you're interested in from the Women of Valor exhibit. And um, instead, you can sort of put together your own lesson here. And we have a lot of ideas for how to do that. Some um, graphic organizers and other resources that we've created for adapting large texts or using photographs, and then some other great places to find primary source um, teaching resources online. Um, so that's just what we have on the site. And now I'd want to share a few ideas with you, um, here. So I think that especially it, it's, it's always good for us to start our lessons with, uh, an exploration of what students already know and where they are. So uh, an intro activity that we use a lot when we go out into different communities, especially working with educators and we're introducing um, the Women of Valor exhibit is we start by asking people to name, you know, who are the Jewish, Jewish heroes you know about or who are the famous Jews you know of. And sometimes we can prompt them, you know, biblical people. OK, what about people from sort of the Talmudic era and what about people in in recent history? Um, and it's interesting to see what lists, what people are on the list that are generated. And in many cases, we find that um, there are far less women on these lists than there are men. Although, of course, that really depends on the experience of the students in the room. It's also interesting to see sort of who are the people and, and what they're known for, especially if we know of other famous or not so famous Jews who have done similar work. So it's a, it's a great way to get your students or participants in the program thinking about, you know, what makes somebody a Jewish hero? Who are the heroes that we've already identified as a community? Um, who are the people that we've identified as individuals, as role models? And then also, 
you as the facilitator can sort of call out, okay, what's missing? Do we have any women in this group? You know, what about people who aren't activists, but maybe did their work through philanthropy or something else? So it's a great way to sort of call out uh, the areas that we are missing in our in our own knowledge and then use that as a starting point for your lessons. Um, if you want to, uh, oh, sorry, if you want to see an example of this, you can go to this URL, which you can't click on now, but will be in the recording and will be included in the PowerPoint presentation after this, which will be posted later this week to the website. Um, and you can also play, play it as a game. So if you have your students divide into teams and list all of the famous Jews they know, they can compete with each other and they, because they only get points for people that other teams have not listed. So it's a really great way to sort of skim off the top of the people that we all really know about and, and really force students to rack their brains and think about who might be a Jewish role model. And, and it can bring up a lot of great conversation. Um, so he, these are two activities that I think are pretty great for all ages. One is using um, visual thinking strategies to study, especially historic photographs or um, pieces of art. Um, you basically ask, ask three simple questions. What is going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? And what more can we see? Asking students to identify, sort of analytically look at a photograph and make observations about that. And then after you've introduced, after they've had a chance to observe the photograph and talk a little bit about it, you can introduce, introduce some historical context um, bring in some other photographs to compare to it, whether they're current, you know, more current photographs or um, other pictures of a, an event or that person's life. Um, and if you Google visual thinking strategies, the VTS website has a lot of fantastic video tutorials um, for different educators that are working with different age groups. And you can basically learn how to facilitate this sort of session on your own, um, which is great. And we have links to that also from our site. Um, another fun activity for all ages is the game Celebrity, or some people call it 20 Questions. And I re recently saw a commercial version of this called Headbands for younger kids, um, where you basically, either you or your students generate a list of people and each person is put on a piece of paper and then you stick that piece of paper to your forehead so that the person whose head it, it's on doesn't know who they are. And they have to ask questions to one another to help figure out who they've done or who, who they have on their forehead. So it's a great way to review information that you've already learned about uh, different people. So a great sort of concluding lesson. Or um, if you have maybe a one-time program, you can have stations around the room where people learn about different Jewish heroes, and then you can sort of give them a cheat sheet to help refresh their memory of who these people are, and they can use that to ask questions. Um, and it's also a really fantastic way to highlight comparisons between people. So asking questions of, you know, was I an activist? Did I, um, did I know Martin Luther King? Um, was I, um, you know, did I participate in the strike or the uprising of the 20,000? You know, it's a, it's a great way to um, connect people with the actions that they took and the events that they were a part of and um, sort of help to synthesize all of that together. Um, this is sort of like a standby. And if you're an elementary educator, I'm sure that you've done this or thought about doing it before, but it's pretty classic and a fantastic and really fun uh, way to have younger students explore um, heroes and role models, um, which is to have each of the students research someone, and it can be someone that you assign or someone that they get to choose. Um, it would be pretty easy to also do, um, if you didn't want to do sort of historical people, to have um, your students, say, interview someone who's contemporary and, and be that person in the Wax Museum. Um, they can develop their own sort of museum guides about that person. They could write a report. They could write a little script and make an audio recording that you could listen to on a podcast, sort of as an audio tour of the exhibit. And then they get to dress up as that person and give a little spiel or have some sort of, um, you know, 
exhibit label that gives some information and you can have other classes visit, have parents come and visit. Um, it's a great way to bring other people into whatever learning is going on in the classroom. And um, one of my favorite things to do when I'm having students make some sort of exhibit or museum of their own is to bring in visitors and have the visitors do a panel discussion, much like we might attend at a museum. Um, so have the students as the, the writers and the curators of the exhibit talk a little bit about what that experience was like. So if parents are coming in to visit, you know, you have the students sit all up on chairs in front of the class and the parents sit in the audience and the parents can ask some questions like, you know, who was your favorite person? What was, what did you like about them? What was inspiring about them? Who do you think that you're most like? Um, what was difficult about this project or, you know, asking questions like that. I think it helps create an opportunity for re reflection for the students. It gives you a chance to gauge what their learning experience has been like. Um, and it's a fun way for parents to be a part of the class, um, the class environment without, uh, with, them letting have their letting them have their specific role and letting your students have their specific role and sort of sharing that experience together. Um, another great way to do Jewish heroes and and sort of explore that is in a, a board game or some sort of card game. Um, and what I like about this is that a lot of games can can highlight making choices. So it's a really um, interesting way to sort of force kids to think about what are the choices that this person made in their lives. Um, and so you can have specific spaces where you have to make a choice to go one space or next space or cards that when you draw them, if you decide to take an action, you move forward. And if you don't decide to, you move backwards or vice versa. Um, it's also sort of an artistic project. So kids can design their own cards or um, boards or pieces. Um, they get to make up their own rules. And it's a really, um, I think it's a, a really different way to help students explore not just what this person did, but sort of what motivated them and, and how did they make the decisions that they made um, and take the action that they took over the course of their lives. Um, and then, of course, you can take turns playing those games. So you can spend a few days you know, or some time in class making the games, and then you can have a class dedicated to playing the games. And that's, it's a really fun way to, um, to do that. For middle school students, I really like the idea of taking some sort of tour. So um, a lot of, there's a lot of different options for doing this, you could uh, set up a tour just around your school and use different photographs to sort of create a, a unique space in each in different parts of your school or in even within your classroom. Um, I also having I'm a former outdoor educator, so I really like the idea of getting kids outside. You can laminate some photographs or put them in Tupperware box and sort of leave them along a path. You can highlight a map um, here in Google Maps. You can make your own map, so you could highlight a map and have the students stop in each place. Um, you can you know have newspaper articles or um, photographs or letters at each of the different stations that sort of help to dissect what is going on in this place. And it, it uses not only chronology, but also geography to talk about a person's life or uh, a time period in history or a, a specific event and sort of all the different smaller events within it. Um, I think it's particularly it's fun and, and it's good to get middle school students up and moving. There are lots of opportunities for them to take turns reading things. You can spend only a, a little bit of time at, at each sort of quote unquote place. Um, and you can also do it in rotation with smaller groups. It can be fil facilitated by madrachim or assistant teaching assistants, um, or it could be self-guided. You could have some sort of audio piece that went along with it. Um, and I think it's also really a strong idea for family programs because parents can help to move from place to place. Um, for high school, I 
have been toying this idea with this idea of having a tea party, which I really like, where you have the students research their characters. Each of them are assigned a historical figure and they have to research that person much like an elementary school student would in the wax museum activity. And they come to class dressed up, either they bring in a costume or you help provide a costume, dress up as that person. And then they take on a debate about a certain issue, whether it's a contemporary issue or a discussion of a Jewish text, but in that debate, they are playing their character. So again, it's an opportunity for students to be thinking critically about what motivates us? How does our identity inform who we are and what we do in the world? Um, and how might our Judaism or our belief, our faith-based beliefs or our morality influence uh, the decisions that we make? And um, when they play this as historical characters or historical people, you can also be intentional about how you assign those characters, right? So if you have a student who's really outspoken about a certain thing, you could assign them a historical figure that takes quite a different position on that issue. Um, and it's a, a good way to have students be analytical, but in a way that doesn't feel so tedious. Um, and we know that teenagers, I mean, all students love to have snacks and food and things like that, but teenagers, especially it, it's a big draw. So if you're doing a tea party, it's a good excuse to, you know, bring in some tea and some snacks and uh, let them sort of go, go to town having a, a debate about something of importance. Um, another idea for high school, similar to the idea of board games for middle, for um, elementary school students is to sort of explore this idea of a graphic novel. So, um, I personally don't draw very well, but you could make, you know, photocopies of pictures of the historic historical people and students can sort of cut and paste them into the frames of the graphic novel and they can make just one page or each group could write a chapter of the book or whatever um, that plays out a, a decision or sort of difficult experience or conflict and what the resolution of that was. So um, for people who are also teaching in day schools, it's a great way to um, sort of follow the arc of a story. What's the beginning and the middle and, of, and the end and how, what is the conflict and how does that resolve? Um, but it's also a, a fun way to sort of highlight, you know, what this person's motivation was and, and what their impact was. How is this person as the protagonist moving the story along? Um, I see Linda is posting something here, so I'm just going to read through it real quick. Linda says, the Maryland Women's History Project and Heritage Center focuses just on Maryland women, including women like Henrietta Zold and Shoshana Cardin. Um, so she's asking about Maryland women. I'm not sure, aside from doing a search in the encyclopedia, I'm not sure how to find women specific to Maryland on our site. Uh, well, one place to find them is um, we did a whole oral history project in Baltimore called Weaving Women's Words Baltimore Stories. And if you look under um, under community oral history, which I think is listed under exhibits. Yeah, let's just go and look. Um, Oops. If you go under exhibits, you'll see community oral history projects. And if you click on that. Um, and you go down to Weaving Women's Words, which is the third item. Um, you'll see that under that there's Baltimore Stories, Seattle Stories, and Washington, D.C. Stories. And you can click on Baltimore Stories. And, and the narrators, those are the women that we interviewed. So there's a whole list of women that we interviewed. And you can find a short bio and quote from them. Um, and there are we, of course, have full uh, transcripts of the oral histories as well as recordings. Um, also, they should be found at the Jewish Museum of Maryland. Great. Um, and I should also say um, that we are always happy to hear more from people about women in their communities. So there are a few really fantastic ways to share their stories with us. If they, the other, so the other place to look is under research in the encyclopedia and you can look people up by keyword and by name there. Um, but if there's someone who you think should be featured on the site and isn't, you're always welcome to email us and we're happy to 
work with you if if you wanted to write something or reach out to someone in your community to write something. We have a few places on our site where we can add new content. The blog is one place um, for recently deceased women. We also have a, um, a a feature called We Remember for women who have died since two, the year 2000. Um, and it's a great way to honor the women from your community. So that was, I'm really glad you asked that question. Um, so let me just see what other slides I had. So I talked about graphic novels. Does anyone have any questions um, so far about the things I've talked about? And um, I have to say we're here after hours and our cleaning person has arrived. So if you hear vacuuming in the background, I apologize. <laughs> um, so I'll just highlight a few things and then we can take the last five minutes or so for you all to share any ideas that you have. Um, again, you can't click on these URLs now, but you'll be able to once these are posted. Um, and if you go to our website under best practices, there are ideas from the field and from JWA. Um, I'll show you real quick where that is. Um, so if you go to jwa.org slash teach and you go to this section down here called best practices, um, you'll find this is, this is also, I should say, a somewhat outdated part of our site and we're working, we'll be working over the summer to um, find some ways to update this so that we can start to capture more best practices from people like you in our community who are um, doing really great work. So there are a few examples here of um, cool things that people have done many with the Women of Valor exhibits. Um, and then we also have ideas from, more ideas for from P educators in the field for working with the Women of Valor exhibits and ideas from Jewish Women's Archive. And um, you'll see that the ideas on these pages are sort of listed by setting, which is a really fantastic um, place for you to come and find different ideas depending on where you're working. And I know that many of us educators wear different hats. So, you know, on Sunday, you might be at a Sunday school and on Tuesday nights, you might be with a Rosh Chodesh group and on Thursday nights, you might be with the sisterhood. So there are lots of ideas here and I encourage you to explore them. Um, let me just see if there's anything else I missed. No, nope, I think that's it. So uh, just to say one more thing, I don't think you said this, Etta. Um, the, at the bottom of each of those pages, you'll see there's a comment field. So please also add, if there's an idea of something that you've done that worked well, we would love to hear about it. You can send it to us as an, in an email or you can, um, you can put it in the comment field at the bottom of those best practices pages. Right. And um, oops, I'm put, putting the URL for our email form, education. There's the URL for our um, email form in the group chat, and we're always happy to have emails from you, uh, whether you've had a lesson that worked out really great and you want to share that with us, or if you need some help, we would love to hear from you either way. So we have just a few more minutes. I want to make sure that I leave time for any questions or ideas that you would like to share at this point. Um, so feel free to jump in if you have anything to contribute. Are we online? Are we not muted? Exactly. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, it's Linda Sheffers. I just wanted to say this was just terrific. I'm glad I finally got to see a webinar. And, and it's really important, you know, those of us that are in public education, that we, if we're not teaching in a Jewish school, that we really um, give credit and, and interesting information about Jewish women as well. So thank you so much. And we'll, we'll send you some Jewish women from Maryland, um, some information as we gather it over the years so fabulous and there's also i don't know um i don't think we showed you this but I, I i wanted to show you the baltimore stories thing specifically but there also are other women from maryland who we would who would be included in our encyclopedia right. so we have a, a a women's hall of fame with quite a few of those women on it but i the baltimore exhibit was wonderful we did collaborate right. with the uh, jewish museum on that so. and if even people who who i mean so i'm sure some of the women that you know of are in our encyclopedia and i'm sure there are many who are not so we want to hear about both of them but even the women who are in the encyclopedia again there's a comment field at the bottom of each of those essays if there's anything that's missing from 
from the article, please do add it or you know add links to other information about that woman. It's it really helps us beef up our resources when when we people can add what they know. Terrific. Does anyone else have any questions before we sign off for the evening? Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming, um, coming out on a weeknight evening, week evening, weeknight. There we go. <laughs> As you can see, it's been a long day for me. Um, I'm really glad that you were all able to make it. I hope that you will um, encourage your friends and colleagues to sign up for our future webinars. Um, and as I said, the content from this webinar will be posted. The PowerPoint should be posted tomorrow and the video hopefully will be posted um, by Monday. So you can um, come back to refer to it or uh, send friends and colleagues to the URL that's listed here, jwa.org slash teach slash prof dev slash webinars slash March 13th. <laughs> um, or you can just do a search for webinars on our site and it will bring you to the webinar page. Um, and also just wanted to remind you that in addition to online learning opportunities, we also do in-person professional development. And as I yeah. mentioned briefly at the beginning, we're going to be doing um, two workshops this summer, one in the Bay Area in August and one um, in the uh, New York area in June. And um, we encourage you to apply and to spread the word to other educators whom you know in those areas who you think might be interested. Um, so I had to just put in the chat box the um, URL for the information on the workshops. Um, and we hope that we will hear from you again, either in person or in an online learning venue. So thanks so much and have a great night.